Okay, let me share screen. Okay. Can you see my screen? Uh, I think. Now it's a, it's a black screen. It says it's, oh no, now we got it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so I took the first two photographs. I was reading this magazine um, and there was an artist in there and I was recreating the images in the magazine. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just sharing my best photos that I feel like I've taken so far. Okay. So I pretty much played with self-portraits most okay. of the time. Um, I was trying to find other people, but I don't know too many people out where I am. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to turn the camera on myself. Um, I also think it's good practice because I'm going to let them live as photographs, but I really want to get in the habit of photographing myself to paint. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been trying to figure out like how to like have them live because there's this painting by Barclay Hendricks. It's a self-portrait. Um, it's something endowed, like uh, something endowed. If you put in endowed Barclay Hendricks, like the photograph, the painting will come up. And so essentially that's my goal um, mm -hmm. to get to a point where I can photograph myself well, understand the camera well, and then be also able to like paint myself from the self-portraits that I take. Mm. Um, and these instances, like I was really just having fun because I feel like I need to insert my artwork somehow, like in the mm. images. Um, also having a conversation about like working from home as well. Um, these images, I'm supposed to be focusing on my hair for this particular concept that I have. Mm. Um, so we'll see kind of like where those go, but I really like these edits. Um, I was gonna go for black and white, but I just decided to make it a little bit more cool, some more on the bluer side. Mm -hmm. I really like that one. Yeah. I started getting like emotional because I was looking at my photos and I was like, wow, like I'm going to look back at these photos, but like she was so young. No, that's, <laughs> that's a beautiful thing for sure. I think, that's that's like, my, I think I'm going to like fall in love with taking photographs of myself to log what I look like. Mm -hmm. This one was fun. Um, I still had to insert my artwork. It's kind of like a, it's still a self-portrait um, mm -hmm. via my artwork and with me still like being reflected on my phone. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, very in your element right here, for mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> this is like for sure like this is how I feel like when I'm out if I want to be in the mode of like I mean obviously I'm going to be able to critically think at all any given time of the day but sometimes I do feel like I need some type of armor so mm -hmm. I will dress a certain way to like amplify how I want to feel and to be able to like articulate myself even better mm -hmm. That's how I see like getting dressed up. Like when I go out and stuff, depending upon how I'm dressed up, like I feel like that's my armor and it's like getting me prepared to like think. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those are my images. What inspired you to do this first one here? This first one, um, Hans Ulrich Olbrist. He's in this magazine um, and he has He's talking about, it's actually a really good article. Um, I'll share it in the chat. He's talking about um, working from home and what that looked like during the pandemic. Um, thinking about perhaps not being a, like, like a halt from like working because everyone was at home. Uh, yeah. So thinking about like, well, am I still going to be able to do what I do? Because he's a critic, he's a writer, um, and he does like consistent studio visits with different artists. But during the pandemic, we couldn't leave. So he started doing like Zoom calls, like 
hundreds of Zoom calls with like different artists and stuff like that. And I was just like, wow, you just have to problem solve and not only problem solve, but like innovate. So he had these images, um, he was dressed and he had this one where he was leaning on the printer. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go do that. So this <laughs> was like a fun one. Um, then in this one, he had uh, like, it was like a to-do list I think in his hand and he was standing in front of a couch. Um, and I had just finished all these text pieces. So I said, hmm, I'm gonna insert my text piece instead. Um, mm -hmm. And also think about work from home. Like I have my tripod, I'm, on my bed, like, so I'm definitely at home and then I'm taking this photograph. Mm -hmm. So just kind of like a cosplay on that. Is this, is everything in this photo real? Cause it all looks so Photoshop. I literally can't even tell. No, it's all real. I think because, <laughs> yeah, because I was trying to figure out how to, so here's my thing, overexpose and underexposing. Okay. So what I learned after taking these photos is that even if you want to edit it, edit the photograph in a way that looks overexposed, mm -hmm. you still want to photograph it, it to absorb all the information. So you want to mm -hmm. photograph it so you can see everything and it grabs every detail, but you can edit it any way you want to. Absolutely. So that's what I learned after overexposing this photograph. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so that's why it um, that's why it looks like this because like the wall is actually like the like a grayish color, but it's blending wow. with the baseboard because it was overexposed. Right, right. So my professor was telling me, like, even if you want to edit it this way, when uh -huh. you photograph it, you want to make sure that you have all capturing all the information in the mm -hmm. image. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like it's whited out in the background. It's blending in. Yeah. Uh, but that's because I took it and it was overexposed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I feel like the, the few photographs that you have shown us speaks to staging. And I feel like that's something that you should kind of fixate on and maybe explore a little bit with your, your new journey into photography and documenting yourself. I feel like you have something there. And I think you should really just kind of play around with staging, like obviously including yourself in the images, but you seem to be going with the more stage route, which I think is cool. Yeah, I want to also like consider composition. Yeah. Like, even with the self portraits, like I have to click it and then run. So <laughs> get a clicker. Get a clicker. Okay. <laughs> because, like with the, so I'm using, I'm borrowing this camera. So it's a digital, it's a, it's a Nikon. D oh yeah. Shout right. out Nikon. Huh? <laughs> Shout out Nikon. I have my Nikon here. Um, <laughs> yes. Yep. <laughs> so it's like the more I learn the more I enjoy it yeah. um, but it doesn't have like you know like the screen it's not like I can pull it out and like see it you know um, oh. I may consider getting a mirror because I like I just I watched this like snippet of Kim Kardashian I don't know but it was on my timeline and she said something that helped her is uh, Paris Hilton would put a mirror behind the photographer so she could see herself. Mm -hmm. I was like, ah, oh. so I'll <laughs> but for real, because if I'm by myself, it's like, this is a one woman show. So yeah. it can be a little bit difficult. So I think that's something that I'll integrate because I want the composition to look, I want it to compositionally be strong as well. Mm -hmm. So. You should look into a uh, Sony, look into their Sony A5000 and their Sony A6000. They're really great um, cameras for beginners and you'll have the mirror and everything to where you can see yourself. Mm, okay. Yeah. What else do you guys think? Uh, go through them. Keep going through them. Yeah, let's see. Love that one. Yeah. So you're obviously also playing around with lighting, which can really add to the storytelling aspect of your self-portraits. So I feel like you should make a note of that as well. Okay. Staging, lighting. And then you said in these three photos in particular, you were focusing on hair? Yeah, so um, I have to take a whole bunch more photos. Like I took some this morning as well. Um, I'll probably only include this one. 
Okay. I actually submit it, but I wanted to share all three. Okay. So why that, why that one? Out of the uh, because I'm touching my hair. So I think it's a bit like overstated, more obvious, mm-hmm. especially when I combine it with the other six photos I have to submit. Mm, okay. Okay. And this is for um, a current project at um, school? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, well, I think uh, these portrait shots um, My favorite. are really great. Yeah. Um, the last one with the text piece in it um, with the question. This one is really great, too. Um, the other one when you were on the bed. Um, yeah, I really like this one here. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, a, a lot just uh, stands out to me. I wanted to ask you what inspired you to um, pick this piece out of all your um, pieces to put in this photo. This is my favorite one. Like to date, all the ones that I photograph, even though it's like I took it overexposed, I really like this one. I like that there's someone else's artwork back there. Um, I enjoy my plant there. I enjoy that it's also at a slant because I got critiqued because it wasn't straight. Um, but I actually <laughs> wasn't straight because like yeah, here yeah. it's like slanted, so oh, it's okay. uphill. So there was a critique about like maybe the camera was like tilted, and honestly, maybe it was. Um, but who cares? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like uh, my professor's critique is like really. It's like honestly incredibly helpful, which is why I think my photographs just got better over time uh-huh. because I was technically able to do what the camera was at, what I wasn't able to do originally. Mm. But creatively, I do have some like, mm, I don't know, girl, I would still show this. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, this one is probably my favorite one. And I think mostly too, because I had just finished these like text pieces. So it's also highlighting like uh, works in progress that I'm, like working on actually. Mm-hmm. I feel like when you're learning like photography 101 in an institutional setting, they will tell you that you kind of have to learn the rules before you can break them. So they're very big on composition, you know, photos being straight, using a tripod, um, you know, you're learning shutter speed, all these different things. But I feel like depending on what your goal is, with these photographs, you don't necessarily have to follow those, those rules. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Like, it's like, what are you trying to communicate through your photographs and just like kind of focus and fixate on that idea more than having the perfect photo. Cause it's not like you're making photos for like commercial use or like editorial photographs. So they don't have to be picture perfect per se, but when you are learning photography, um, in that kind of way, they, they sort of preach that, but you can defy those odds. It just depends on what you want to communicate. But Mm -hmm. like, I don't, I don't care that this photo is slanted. Like it actually, to me, makes the photo a little bit more interesting. (laughs) Yeah. I just absorbed all the, all the like technical critique. Cause like something Mm -hmm. like, I was still trying to figure out how to not overexpose the photograph. And I was trying to figure out, well, I want it to look like this. And then she's like, well, you still have to collect all the information because at least if I collect all the information in the photograph, I can go into Photoshop Mm -hmm. and do whatever I want to it and always still have like the raw image. So that's Mm -hmm. what I was like struggling with initially. So now Mm -hmm. I like do my test shots, um, which is also kind of hard because I'll be at like arm length, even though I may be a bit further. (laughs) (laughs) like my face like I need like uh focus in my face like um like these were difficult at first but then I got it and so I felt like okay like I'm on the right path Mm -hmm. um but standing in front of a window uh over here in the photograph so the light was coming in like where I'm sitting there's light like you can see the line like that's the line that'll come in Mm -hmm. cool yeah. Well, much respect to you um, doing these self-portraits. I've been interested in doing some self-portraits, but at the same time, I all my cameras are film cameras. And um, I do have a tripod and everything set up, but um, I'm still learning as well how to use the camera and, um, you know, do all the settings and stuff like that. And 
also with film, you know, you have to wait a while to even see, like, get your results back. So, like, mm-hmm. um, that's another thing I'm trying to get used to, I guess, is uh, patience with um, the photography and the art that I'm putting out. Mm-hmm. I would say do the self portraits. On the phone is different. Like, I'll try. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So thank you. All the- <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, uh, I, the phone is not the same. Um, Mm -hmm. I will say because it's so, I think because it's so instant, I don't feel like the phone is the same, but has the capacity to, if you know how to manipulate it well, but I will say taking the time to like learn your camera for you, um, makes the image that much more fun in my opinion and a bit more creative and then film that's like a whole different thing so because you have to wait like you don't even know if the image came out exactly (laughs) (laughs) I would definitely say like start taking them because I was getting emotional looking and I was like wow I think I'm gonna start a whole practice just taking photographs of myself you know Uh, trying to look for other people like I'm I'm right here Mm-hmm. So I think that it will help um, just think, even if I don't share them all, I'm just going to take like a whole bunch. Mm-hmm. As cliche as it sounds with photography, it is true that practice makes perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just had a question for you, Sunny and Trey. Are, when you guys are learning the camera currently, are you shooting in manual? Mom? Oh, no, no. Uh, uh, so I started off in manual um, and it, it was interesting. I, the shots came out exactly how I kind of pictured them. But mm-hmm. as I got into deeper into photography, I was just like, oh, okay. Apertures and shutter mm-hmm. speed and uh, what is it? ISO and stuff like that. And I was just like, oh man, uh, okay. I got some learning to do. <laughs> and What uh, about you, Sunny? <laughs> Mine is in manual. Okay. And I'm too scared to take it off manual because she grades us. Don't don't take it off manual. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like it's difficult. But if I just don't think about it, like honestly, I hadn't thought that I didn't even remember that it was still in manual until you look. I looked, I was like, oh, it's like in, it's still on manual. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's cool because I get to just press every button to figure out what it does. <laughs> yeah. And not only that, but when you're shooting in manual, that's when you're going to learn the most. If you can adjust your own settings inside with natural light outside, you will learn. You will know how to do everything with the camera. You can shoot anywhere. It's like a computer. Yes. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I would say for both of y'all, my friend Stoltz gave me this camera last year that I've been shooting with consistently. And this is when I learned how to shoot in manual just last year. And I've been doing photography for like six years now. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah. Shoot in manual. Uh, A a true vet. A true (laughs) vet. (laughs) Not Not even. I do not classify myself as like a photo nerd. Like I wasn't taught photography technically. I didn't study it institutionally. Like I just played around with the camera. That's the best way you're gonna learn. <laughs> I feel it. Yeah. You ready to share? Me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your timer was about to go off anyway. Let me see. Okay, oh, I see. You have six minutes. Do you wanna share your artist bio and your artist statement? Uh, we literally talked about this talking on because I said I was like I looked at mine I was like "Mm, it's so long Um, no I think (laughs) I I only said no because so basically I said if you would like to share it you're more than welcome to share it and I changed my mind about an artist statement because I don't necessarily know what my process is with photography yet Mm, it's very different from like my conceptual practice with like art and writing and stuff where I feel like those statements kind of intertwine Mm -hmm. um with photography specifically I'm not too sure but you know what I'll just read the one that's on my website yeah I still want to hear it (laughs) this one is just the one that I'm going to edit it before the new year and come in come in hot again (laughs) Okay, this is the one that um, 
I kind of still align with, I think I'm going to no longer use like assemblage. Okay. Because I find that when I'm listening to different interviews, like if they're, if they don't experience blackness, they'll just like, oh, you're doing 101 things. This is assemblage. And I'm mm-hmm. like, mm, that's kind of lazy. Mm-hmm. So I want, because if it's not assemblage, it mm-hmm. doesn't, we don't have to label it as assemblage. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think that that is kind of like a, it could be expounded upon more because mm-hmm. a lot of artists are not doing assemblage. Some are, and some literally are not. Some mm-hmm. are learning new languages and new mediums to communicate and articulate something different. But right. it doesn't mean that it's a, like, it's not assemblage. That's such an overhyped, overused word in the fine art community. Yeah. I got trapped. That's why I send my thing. <laughs> right. That's my thing. Okay, okay. So mine says, my visual stride has found itself to explore an aesthetic and affect between video and paint. I reflect conceptual ideas of and related to the experience of Blackness, focusing on its articulation, granting myself permission to borrow liberally in order to form and think through unstable ideas to contest and respond to. My studies lean on capturing contemporary languages, negotiating the flexibilities in language, and highlighting temporal drags that are culturally accepted colloquially. Wow. (laughs) Very well written. (laughs) I'd be writing over whatever. (laughs) (laughs) It makes sense that you're working in video and paint and then even with your new venture into photography, there's still that staging element. So you should really think about that. Mm, Yeah, I agree. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I agree that was nice thank you <laughs> yes, thank sir. you uh, okay oh, um, let's go let's go I'm very excited this has been so fun so far so thank you yes. <laughs> oh shit how do I share my screen let's see the green button at the bottom they should be different colors they're all like the same color so I made a whole slideshow. I thought this was like. <laughs> no, that's okay. You okay. totally. So I'm just basically going to talk about my most recent project, which is titled Spine of the Continent. And I worked on this project um, throughout 2020 and 2021. So to start off, my artist bio, Bria Goodall, born 1992, Los Angeles, California, is a traveling artist working in photo photography to explore and document the arbitrary nature of Black racial identity in addition to self-identity. Her interests also include reinventing personal memories, examining ethnic or cultural identities, as well as the intimacy of those lives around the world. Goodall received an MFA from Otis College of Art and Design in 2020, and shortly after graduating, her work was selected to be featured by online art magazine Hyperallergic, Her work has recently been featured by the Irvine Fine Arts Center in the group show All Media 2021 and was selected by the California African American Museum's assistant curator, Taylor Porter, for an honorable mention. Um, Artist statement, (laughs) Bria Goodall is a photo-based artist living and working in her hometown, LA, but not limited to her geographic location as she creates overseas. Goodall's work examines social structures, employing geographical context and themes of reclamation. Her practice borrows from visual language, ranging from portraiture, documentary aesthetics through film photography, and the duality of the indexical and photographic objectness. Bria Goodall is interested in how social control is manifested in spaces both public and private that determine how melanated bodies navigate throughout. I'm trying to take away from that word black because we all know black is a construct. So I'm still trying to figure out what I want to replace that word with. So for now I have melanated bodies. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Spine of the Continent is a new series by Bria Goodall that interprets scenes of imitation, measures of protection and family life for black sons and fathers in South Central LA. After the killing of George Floyd during the COVID-19 pandemic, another generation of African-American families bore the responsibility of facilitating difficult conversations with their younger male relatives around racial injustice and police brutality. Goodall explores the limited mobility and body language of an African-American son and father in their hometown. 
Goodall reimagines the home can serve as a place of peace where intimate memories have the freedom to take up space if even just for a moment. So here's the first photograph titled Body Language and I made notes. So for this one specifically, it has the posture um, in the hands is above the abdomen, which I feel like is a very learned posture for people of color when they go out into the world, whether they want to feel a sense of protection or maybe they're uh, uneasy or they want to communicate confidence or dominance around a certain group of or around a certain gender, I might say, or group of people. So I think myself as the photographer, I'm allowing the viewer to explore these two photographs shown as a diptych very closely. And although they pretty much mirror each other, they're oddly different. Um, so yeah, that's where I was going with this diptych. And you guys can stop me halfway through, like if you have questions um, or comments. I enjoy this one because I agree. I can't remember if we talked about this one or not, but uh -huh. I think that was something that we perhaps, because I've seen that too. Mm -hmm. It's like a, perhaps like a learned place of comfort. Mm -hmm. Like you said, also like dominance, even, even mm -hmm. just thinking about like uh, biologically, like protecting those inner organs. Yeah. You know, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but that's how I kind of like read it. Like when I'm out, I think of like, if we were not here, what would be in place of the hand? Like, would it literally be a shield? Mm -hmm. like, what would be there? And I think the hands act perhaps as like a body. As a shield. Mm -hmm. Wow, girl, let me, let me. <laughs> <laughs> that just made me want to change the title. Um, <laughs> so this is the next photograph titled Hold Still. And I feel like this is where myself as a photographer, I, I allow the viewer to uncover that there's another subject in the project, uh, someone with very tiny hands that would lead you to believe this is a child. And then I feel like the position of his hands on this man's face in close proximity, it communicates to the viewer that they have some type of close relationship that's not fully recognized yet because you, you can't see the, the subject um, in its totality. And then this piece, my famous piece, South Central Recreation. Um, and this one, you can see the son is mimicking the behavior of his father, which is learned behavior. And the gaze there is sensing a consent between the subject and the photographer, which I feel like also communicates there may be some type of relationship between the photographer and the subjects. Um, and then once again, the son's posture, I think, isn't as convincing as his father's. You can still see a little bit of innocence shining through. Um, and then you have the two kids in the background that are running around playing as if no one's watching, like as if none of us are there, as if we're not having a full photo shoot here in front of the house. <laughs> I feel like this is a true representation of Black children enjoying their youth and their free time, hence the term recreation and South Central to sort of reiterate the possibilities, the positive possibilities in this geographic location of LA. It's like a painting with the kids in the background. That's, Low key. that's my favorite. Low key. I want somebody to paint this photograph. So yeah, I don't know if it would be the same if they weren't there low key. It wouldn't. Oh, no, it wouldn't. I have images uh, that I was just looking at yesterday when I was preparing this of like just two minutes before the kids were running. And it's a completely different photograph. Mm -hmm. completely. Like they make it. They're like, oh, it's just it. It it definitely they they both tell a story and they're both together. Like yeah. mm -hmm. you guys know a little funny story. So when I was picking up this piece, it's right here. It's in my uh, on my wall now but when I was picking, <laughs> when I was picking up this piece from the gallery the guy that was helping to deinstall helped me carry it out to my car and he was like I just love this photograph and I'm like what do you love about it he's like you know it just it just takes me back to like uh you know like Fairfax <laughs> Fairfax <laughs> okay y'all are, are from LA so y'all know when he said this I'm like Bro, so, this is not Fairfax. The homes alone don't even scream Fairfax. 
<laughs> the homes alone definitely they scream anywhere between that's yeah, basically south central so this could yep. be like slawson this could be mid city this could be um like it's just south central like it could be well, like you know it's very close to slawson this is like brian hurst 54. oh see you know yeah. <laughs> the architecture yeah i was like I fairfax i don't know I, it was this is a white man. He was like, "Yeah, it just makes me think of Fairfax." I'm like, mm, "Okay, wherever so, the story takes you, sir." Right, you can imagine whatever you want. <laughs> okay, and so this one I titled "A Parallel Arrangement," and this one obviously is staged to an extent, um, and it, it's pretty similar to the last one in the sense that uh, the son is mimicking his father. Um, I think after examining the, fa the father's body language, if you look up close, you can see his fists are slightly balled together, kind of communicating he's the protector in this relationship. Mm -hmm. And I feel like as he stands tall with his chest out, exuding a sense of maybe masculinity, hyper-masculinity, if you want to go that far, um, you can see his son is sort of mimicking that behavior once again, although his innocence is very radiant. But to me, more than anything, I love this photograph, not because it's like it's your traditional stage, let's stand back to back, but I feel like the geographic location with the palm trees in the back, the stop sign, the homes, like to me, this screams South Central without it being so like, hey, we're in South Central. It's, it's a little more discreet <laughs> from the city than you know. So um, this one is titled Free Run. I think the same thing is happening here. You now have them on the steps when you can see the shadow, the background of the palm tree, the reflection, um, which is also communicating the domestic space. Um, you once again have one of the kids show up in the background, just completely just doesn't care that, <laughs> that we're doing it. It's I don't feel like he's like free run. Like this is my house. I'm walking around. I'm doing what I want. And I like the fact that even though he's walking towards them, both the father and the son, their gaze is still directly on, on me, the photographer on the camera. So that was kind of cool. And then lastly, um, this, I feel like you kind of catch a glimpse, just a moment. You catch a glimpse just for a moment where the father is sort of letting his guard down, which you don't see a lot of black men do. Um, unless they're in a space where they feel comfortable or where they can just kind of let down that guard. So to me, this, this photo was really special and the title, just a moment, I kind of brought back to the whole description of the project where in the last sentence, I say, Goodall reimagines the home can serve as a place of peace where intimate memories have the freedom to take up space, even if just for a moment. So just kind of tying that in with this last photograph and yeah, that's my that's my work. <laughs> um, one question about this photo. Mm -hmm. um, I see that it is all black and white, but the rose is mm -hmm. still red. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering what is what is the reasoning behind that? So I just thought it was cool that this backyard is really big, but there's that one section of the backyard where there's roses planted and they just happen to be sitting directly in front of the rose. And I feel like, although you can only see one eye from the sun, to, uh, to me, that eye is kind of like resembling that rose. Like, I, I don't know, to be honest, I'm not even sure I have an exact answer, but it makes sense to me in that way. Like, it's almost like a peekaboo moment, but it's like a moment of beauty. Um, so I just kind of wanted that rose to kind of pop through. I feel like anytime you make a photo black and white, it's timeless. And um, you just have that, that pop of color, that, that thing, that color, that element that's going to make people say, hmm, I wonder why she made that decision to make a black and white photo and have one pop of color in red. Like, what's that about? So I don't know. It's kind of also to let the viewer just kind of wonder and make your own conclusion about what you think it what you think it is <laughs> yeah um so this is the father and the son and I like how the rose is kind of coming out of the son's back in a way like it and mm -hmm. it has that color and it's just I can't really find it right now but like mm -hmm. it is just 
feel like it's just kind of like growth in a way it symbolizes um growth mm. and it symbolizes um yeah just growth I think it symbolizes growth thank you I think that was a cool assessment I like that you noticed it looks like it's coming out of his back and kind of hints playing on the title spine of the continent, like that word spine. So I think that's really, that's a really cool assessment. Yeah. I honestly didn't even notice it at first. <laughs> Were you like, I don't know what this thing, this blog. I was like, red rose, what? Um, but I, I think it's a, I didn't see it. Um, but I'm glad that I do now. It's like a full bloom. That, th that uh, one where the little boys, I think, I feel like I told you that there was a language there, that there was you a did. language with like, um, that kind of like kid interjection when you're like taking what I would consider, let's just say like a stage photograph. Mm -hmm. um, because this is reminiscent of a painting too, because it's not just like something, it's not just like one layer. It creates like uh, three dimensions. We have the kid mm -hmm. in the front and foreground. We have, um, the father and son in the middle ground and then you have the home in the background so it creates like three dimensions like there's space here to kind of like maneuver and navigate oh yeah definitely this is definitely um it reminds me in a, of a painting for sure um yeah there's just a lot of a lot of depth to this photo thank like, you yeah it's a beautiful shot. Yeah. No, Sunny, you were the one that actually made me sit with this photograph because I had actually overlooked it. Um, and I remember having like a short critique where you were like, oh, wait, go back to this one. This photo is interesting. And then I kind of sat with it a little longer and um, it ended up being selected to kind of be in the mix. So, yeah. <laughs> like, um, you know, if we're thinking about like moments, we're thinking about peace, we're thinking about taking up space and the spaces in which we occupy, uh, there's like a freedom there. It's like, where are these kids coming from? And, you know, and they just roaming, you know, <laughs> they're not looking both ways. They're not like uh, hyper alert, you know, yes. they're, like their guard is down. So yes. like that freedom to literally just like, be in the space of what you occupy. And I think it's I think it speaks to that and it strengthens that um like concept and idea. Yeah, no, I agree. Absolutely. The other one that you have where they're standing side by side. This one? Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. I I feel like if I were to have a critique, my only critique would be is it, it aligns with those two palm trees on the left hand side. Uh -huh. like both standing upright and parallel I probably yeah. would have propped out the right side uh well these so these two palm trees you're saying prop that out the photo no I think they're parallel with oh the son and father that was like the first thing I noticed okay I don't know if that was intentional or not oh. but that was the first thing I noticed and I thought like oh that's so cool yeah no it, it wasn't actually and this is kind of a conversation we were having about um, learning photography institutionally. Like this would be a huge rule breaker. Like me having them stand in front of a tree where the leaves are literally pouring out the top of their head. Like that is like photography one-on-one, no, no. Like don't Why? stand in front of a pole because you don't want anything coming out the top of the head. You're defying the laws of photography per se. I would say it kind of speaks to the rose sprouting as well in a way oh, come on <laughs> I would say it would speak to that because arguably if that's like a big no-no but imagine mm -hmm. if you consistently did big no-nos it becomes like a exactly. new language so, and that's, yes yes you know so I think um at least for me and then you know like our hair just defies gravity so it also speaks to like our hair like we, we our hair doesn't this not mine so it's not, it doesn't actually like fall. So I think it also speaks to that too, like define gravity, like hair, mm -hmm. uh, also with the rose sprouting out. So I, even though perhaps it may not technically make sense, I think creatively there's also kind of like a language there too. Like if you were to consistently defy these rules, like what language could you come up with? 
Mm -hmm. That's actually something that I'm really interested in continuing to do because like I said, I never learned photography in that way. So I always question, well, who made these rules? White men. <laughs> I don't live by your standards. Like photography is a realm for you to just be creative. And um, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm going to keep defying those rules. And like I was saying with you, Sunny, like it's some, they say that sometimes you have to first learn them before you break them, but that's not always true. I don't, I don't, I think, I don't think I agree with that either. I think as you go, mm -hmm. if you are ambitious, you'll want to know more. And yeah. I think if you want to communicate more then you will technically learn what needs to be done to communicate more. Uh, I mean, I feel like that's, at least that's what has been working for me. It's like, Mm -hmm. the main reason why I'm in school is because I was not able to communicate more it kind of like stopped my language was just kind of like oh that's all I know yeah it's like well if I want to do this what do I need to do to do that and then I began learning incrementally so I could communicate more and it's like mm -hmm. the more you know the more you can communicate I agree and Trey what about for you because you're a photographer so I'm sure you were taught these same rules um honestly I was taught no rules. Um, <laughs> I, I picked up a camera. I do street photography. So um, if you're familiar with like Jamal Shabazz or like yeah. um, you had posted a you had posted um, a doc. Uh, what is it? Um, Everybody Street. Everybody Street. If you if you watch that, that's pretty much what my work is. Um, okay. A lot of just like I'm out. I see what I I see and I take the photo, uh, whatever it is, um, mainly people. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I'm all about. I'm just like, whatever I see, I'm going to take a photo of it and I, I will make it into what it will be. Like okay. it's going to be what it's going to be. It's, it's yeah. I love that. Um, I think that's probably a great segue for us to jump into uh, your work, unless y'all have any last minute comments or questions or whatever. I appreciate the feedback. <laughs> I enjoy these. Thank you for sharing them. Yeah, your your whole slideshow was very um, interesting. You well put together as well. So thank you so much, guys. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's get it. We say best for last. <laughs> oh, man. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, how do I do this? Uh, I could literally do this every day. Mm-hmm. Low key. Nice. Coons do. <laughs> Wait, I'm about to screenshot. Him. <laughs> There's no one behind me. Oh shoot. <laughs> Sunny is silly. Trolling. <laughs> um, give me one second. There's no rush. I'll I'll be able to edit. Like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Take your time. Yeah, I, I did all these like text pieces. Um, some of them were like things that I put in notes. But the main reason I started is because like some things don't actually. Some things are better left online. If yeah. that makes sense. Like some things better are better read online. Not everything has to be turned into this, but I wouldn't know until I like did it. Right. Right. Okay. Um, oh, where's my okay, here it is. Here. Here it is. Um let me know when you guys can see the screen. Yes. I'm I'm all good. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do have titles for most of these. Um, but pretty much, like I said, um, the, I do street photography. So, um, I pretty much just go out into the world and whatever I see, I try to capture it the best I can. Um, this here, this photo here, let me get the titles. I have them in my phone. I titled this one on my way mm. because, um, most people in this photograph are going somewhere, including myself although I'm not in the photograph, but we're all, we're all going somewhere. Um, and I feel like it's just, it was just a nice photograph to capture. Um, I really love how this came out. This was taken on film. 
this was during my manual days when I had my camera set to manual. So um, I thought it came out really well. Um, so that's uh, one shot here. Um, I have an artist statement. I should probably read it, probably make more sense, I guess. <laughs> I have personally selected these photos to submit because I believe they capture the natu naturalistic aesthetic of my work. My purpose behind being a street photographer is to simply document the world around me. The world is also is always changing. So there is something special about being able to capture a moment in time and making that second last a lifetime. Being a street photographer, each image comes with a story, meeting all kinds of different people while shooting, um, while meeting all kinds of different people while shooting. The photos submitted have been some of my favorite encounters. So um, yeah, this was, this was, I remember this very vividly. Um, this was like around the time when I first got the camera and I was just so excited to step out and shoot. So that, that's that. Um, and where was this shot? Um, this was um, in Oakland. Okay. Just, yeah, on the train or getting on the train. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So train station. Uh, I took this photograph um, on my way to the lab. Like I said in my artist statement, I meet so many different people and I just kind of step out into the world to capture it. And most of these images, you know, um, kind of similar to uh, Jamel Shabazz's work, he... He always asked people like, hey, can I take your photograph? Can I stop? Like, yeah, can I take your photograph? So a lot of the times with my photos, I usually talk to these people and I, I ask them like, hey, let me, let me take your photograph. And they usually ask me why, you know, why, why me? Or what's the point? And I just let them know like this, this is what I want to capture. This, this moment here is, it's a moment that needs to be captured and it should be captured. So mm -hmm. I titled this image Respect the Hustle because uh, we both kind of exchanged the same, um, um, the same kind of, I guess, respect for each other's hustle um, during this photo. Um, he was out, you know, collecting some stuff to sell to make his money. And I'm out collecting my photographs to just kind of, um, yeah, just create some type of world around um what i see and stuff i don't know just create my own little world you know um but yeah so this is respect the hustle i really love this photo a lot um this here i titled this photo king of the hill and um this was on my way back home and he just he just seemed so happy on top of it was a pile of, I, I think it was, that's the house being rebuilt or something like that. And he was taking it apart and just, this image just made me really happy. Like to see him, like we just saw each other. He smiled and I was, I didn't even have to ask him. Like he just, he just seen me like, and it's just like, go ahead. So I was like, <laughs> like yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I see you with the camera. Yeah. Go ahead. I like so. I like these last, well, I like all of them so far, but this one's interesting because I don't know where we are. Yeah, all, all my photographs. Um, so I, I live in Oakland, Oakland, California. Um, yeah, so all these are pretty much in Oakland. Uh, all my photographs are taken in Oakland. But it's nice to have that mysterious, like, mm -hmm. uh, like I, I, I mean, this, you could have told me you were in South Africa. Yeah, no, literally, and I would have believed it. Yeah, because, you know, I don't, I don't, there's nothing telling me you're anywhere specific, which I think is very cool and very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I try to capture, honestly, it's just like the world, and I like how you kind of put it together, how it's just like, you don't really know where exactly it's taken, but it, it speaks mm -hmm. to you. Um, okay, this one here is titled Jesus Saves. Um, this one was taken at a candlelight, 
um, at the lake. Um, uh, this image, actually, I forgot I had black and white film in my camera and I just took it. I, I thought it was going to be like the flames and everything. I thought it was going to be very colorful. And when I got it back, I was just like, oh man, what, black and white? But, <laughs> <laughs> but at first I didn't like it. I didn't like it at first. I was just like, oh, okay, like whatever. And then I just like stared at it for a while. And I was just like, you know what? This is actually really, really nice. Like, I just love the whole, like the black background and just the very, very like little bits of highlights of from the candles and stuff like that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that is Jesus Saves. This is, um, what did I title this? shooting for the stars. Um, this was, I was taking a walk and I heard some basketballs like just bouncing around a lot of, I heard just kids playing basketball and I'm just like, oh, okay, like what's going on? Um, usually with my photographs, I kind of just step out and I'm just like, you know what? I'm just about to go anywhere, whatever, whatever I hear, whatever I see, I'm like, I just walk into it. So like um, there was this youth basketball kind of situation going on I think it was their practice and I had just walked in they kind of looked at me funny like who is this guy like why did he just walk into <laughs> why did he just walk in here and I was like you know what like I'm just here to photograph what you guys have going on I heard the basketballs it kind of gave me like this um nostalgic feel of just like being a kid and stuff and like I I, I did play like basketball, just sports as a kid, baseball, basketball, rugby and stuff like that. And I just like just being in practice and being a kid and stuff like that. I just like thought back to that moment. And I was just, like, this would be beautiful to photograph because it, I, I don't think I remember having that uh, growing up and stuff like that. So I, I just felt the need to photograph it. And this was my favorite of all the photographs that I got of that night. Um, and it just, I, I just love it so much. I enjoy the lights at the top and the two boys on the right, they're floating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're floating. And it's interesting because yeah. they're playing basketball, which, you know, I could imagine hearing boys playing basketball, but this photograph is so quiet. Yes. Yes. It's very quiet. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that you, uh, pulled that from it because you know that's kind of what I get from it too it's just so literally like capturing a moment it's just still in time and just frozen like it's beautiful it's so <laughs> funny though because the exterior up top it's black or I don't know what color it really was in the gymnasium but it imagines it allows me to imagine beyond like I'm almost picturing like if it was just an open gym and you just had like a midnight sky, right. I don't know. I don't know. My mind is going there because it's so black and then you just have these, these pops of light above them. So I don't know. It is something nostalgic about this photograph for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Um, this here is, um, I didn't have a title for this at all. Um, I just spoke to this woman. Um, so in the, left corner that building with the flower on it mm -hmm. that is my photo lab that's where I go to get all my photos developed at so um I, I I believe here I had just turned in my photos and I just loaded up a roll I stepped out and I seen her um she told me her name was pork chop and I <laughs> I just thought she was so sweet because like I walked a couple blocks with her and like, we just like talked and she told me like, you know, um, keep doing what you love to do. And like, she told me she appreciated me taking the photograph and like, she just, and just talking to her and just like being out there with her and just, it was just a very like heartfelt moment for me. And that's like my favorite thing about like being a street photographer and like going out into the world and just like, kind of just being like carefree, careless, just like, I'm just going to step out with my camera and like, just do whatever, like go wherever I want to go and just like <laughs> capture it. But like this, she was just really sweet. And like, yeah, I love this photo a lot too. 
Oh, and this is the first lo uh, photo that you've shown us where we actually have like a location. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, this is in West Oakland, California. Okay, and that's on 16th and Center, Center Street. Center. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, we got this one here. Um, this photograph, um, it's right next to a homeless shelter mm -hmm. that um, I've met a few people at. Um, there's been some uh, racial issues within the community there. So um, it's, it's close to home and I, I kind of walk over there sometimes just to like talk to the people and I've taken multiple photographs of them and so they know who I am and we always like just show love to each other, a mutual respect um, just for, you know, humans in general. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so uh, this photo, I just kind of, just kind of like snapped it, but I just love the way it, it turned out. I'm, I'm currently working on um, a book right now titled um, Greed Will Never Be Your Friend. And that's what this image really like for sure is going to be in my book. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it's just, I, I think it, it just goes with the title a lot of, or yeah, it just goes with the title of the book a lot. And um, just knowing these, this community is it, just, I thought it was a great shot. Hmm. Um, when you're walking, um, I don't know, I guess like, is it casual? Like when you're communicating with them, like are they receptive to you coming with your camera? Like I'm always interested in uh, street photographers and like how the encounters, because at the end of the day, I guess it would have to be like a removal of ego and judgment and just acknowledging people as human beings and just kind right. of like, you know? Yes, yeah, so. Pretty much um, everything is pretty um, natural. You know, I kind of just walk around with the camera and like I said, I kind of just insert myself um, into their world and it's a mutual respect. At, just as human beings, I kind of just walk up and I'm just like, hey, how you guys doing today? You mind if I snap these photographs? Like, and after the photographs, usually it's always just a conversation because, you know, it takes a second just to take a photo and I, it's just weird to me to just snap a photo and just be like, oh, all right, thank you. You know, it's, I'd rather like be there and talk to these people and get to know, get to know them and know the community and stuff. Cause um, it wouldn't be fair for me to just like come and take photographs and like of all this personal and intimate stuff of these people and just like use it for my own whatever. But um yeah, that's kind of where I got the title of this book that I'm working on too. And Greed will never be your friend. Mm -hmm. um, here's another shot here of people in the community. I love this one. Yes. Um, I did not get this man's name, which kind of sucks. I, I love to take notes while I'm out as well. So I usually take notes and Mm. stuff like that I like to get people's names and like their situation and stuff like that and but yeah this this photo came out really great like really great I think it's because it's the direct contact it's not only yeah. the direct contact but it's also another one where I don't know it's something about not knowing the location that uh is actually engaging because it makes me want to be even more nosy like, well, where is this? Who is this person? Um, yeah, so it's the mixture of not knowing at all where this is and the direct gaze. Yep. Okay, so most of these, like I said, are taken in Oakland, California. Um, mm -hmm. The film used on this was Ilfred. I got a lot of Ilfred here, a lot of Ilfred film. Um, yeah. A 35 millimeter film photography here's some more color shots this is um this um this is andre here um while i was out shooting i had taken a break at the lake and i kind of was just like sitting around just kind of 
admiring the world outside this doing this street photography really helps me like just appreciate the world around me like it i i feel really like in tune with it when i'm out and just kind of floating around you know mm -hmm. um but yeah this is andre here um i actually he, this was his idea for the photo. This is taken on my Fuji camera, mm. um, but this was his idea. He, I wanted to take the shot somewhere else, like more green. And um, he was like, you know what? Do you mind taking the photo next to this? Um, I believe it's a mural back there. And he was like, this is my favorite mural. I always come here and just like to look at it. And I would really appreciate it if you could capture this image of me next to something that I love and kind of like memorialize it you know it's so but. funny because this image looks like it could have been taken in like Washington DC maybe I was thinking like Chicago like yeah somewhere in the DMV where it's really cold <laughs> and then also like that element of of time is questionable because although this when did you take this photo this was probably a, a couple of weeks ago like not yeah like last week literally <laughs> last week see like this to me like even like his fashion even in this image to me looks like this could have been a photo from like the 80s All right easy yeah it's that's uh, that's a, that's another reason why i kind of um stopped him um i was just like dude you you look great today. Like, <laughs> like, can I can I please stop you and take this photograph? Like you look great. Like, yeah. <laughs> he he was all for it. He was all for it. So. Yeah, shout out to Andre. <laughs> yeah, that's too cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we got my boy West. Mm -hmm. Um, he is a. Uh, pretty big artist out here in Oakland. Um, he does a lot of paintings and um, I believe some, some graffiti work as well. Mm -hmm. But um, this was last weekend out at our, um, we have a gallery out here in Oakland called Good Mother. And uh, we were outside of Good Mother just chopping it up, having a good time. And uh, yeah, this is, um, this was just his reaction to me taking a photo. This is actually his his infamous face in every photo, which is hilarious. He does this every photo. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's the homie Wes. Okay, well, I have like an overall um, critique or feedback if you're open to it. Yeah, of course. So I feel like your work reminds me a lot of my own work before I got indoctrinated into the fine art community. <laughs> and I think that it's cool that this is your lane, like street photography, and you know that and you're kind of set in that. And mm -hmm. so I did take some notes from like a few things that I heard you say, one of them being that you're, you're kind of creating your own world. So you don't have any like direct signs or elements pointing to like location necessarily, except for that one photo you showed us. Like location, um, a lot of the times the uh, subject's face was a little bit discreet, like the lady in the shopping cart, like she had a hoodie on her head, you couldn't even see her eyes. And then you have others where you have that direct gaze where it's pretty evident as the viewer that you establish some type of um, exchange with yeah. the subject, which a lot of photographers don't do. They may go out and take photos in the community and kind of be very discreet or sly about it, not really acknowledge the subject, but you're like head on with these subjects, like direct gaze, like you're approaching them. Um, and I think that that's really cool. And another thing I noticed was um, you talked about acknowledging the subject and like in a way you're giving them this sense of importance because they're not people in our everyday world that the media or that we would deem important. And so you're going out and you're seeking out these people. And like I said, you're establishing that exchange, that, that level of respect. You're humanizing these people through conversation and through 
these photographs that you're taking. So I think that's really cool. Um, and I wrote that you were not exploiting, but rather having an exchange, which is also, I think, a really good idea as a street photographer, because a lot of these people that you are showcasing, like, you know, around homeless communities, a lot of that is being exploited in, you know, everyday media. Um, and then you also said you like to take notes on these people. I feel like you should play around with that for future work, like somehow incorporate uh, the text or like these these handwritten notes that you're writing out and somehow incorporate that with the photograph um, to make it into something something else or something more than a photograph, you know, if you were interested in that. Yeah, d uh, definitely. Um, currently what I'm doing, like I said, I'm working on this book right now. Um, I can give you like a quick example of kind of like the idea. This is probably one of my favorite art books that I own. This is Richard Prince Cowboy. Okay. Yeah, and it's well, it's kind of hard to show you guys, but like um, it's like a lot of like you said, the text, the photographs, the artwork, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, this is if you guys get a chance look this book up or kind of get it um but basically um what I'm working on is putting these photographs together kind of throwing the text into this book to give a, a deeper description of these photographs and um yeah just incorporating the art and everything into it so it's a it's a project that's going to take some time mm -hmm. um I, I share like little bits of photos on my Instagram and stuff like that, but I really do collect a lot of this stuff and just kind of hoard it in a way because yeah. it's just very, um, I guess, per personal work at the moment because it's not completely ready to be showcased the way I would, I would like it to be. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's always great to like share it always love to um share my work as well so i'm just i'm just waiting for the, the right time the perfect opportunity to showcase it to a bigger audience mm -hmm. i'm stingy with instagram too i think you, that's because it's not i think the amount that you share on instagram is like just enough mm. um a lot of something that i like about these images is not only the consistency of like not necessarily, I mean, you told us we're in Oakland, so I know we're in Oakland, but I do like the mysteriousness of not necessarily knowing. Like if you didn't tell me, I don't think I would have known. Um, let's, can we click through them really quick? Like. Oh uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh good um, me and all yeah. your photos now <laughs> no it's all it's all good this is i was gonna go through here and kind of give you guys more of like Ooh. um yeah, I think there's so um even the ones that i would feel like there's some like noise going on they're still caught in such a subtle quiet way and I don't know if it's because it's the film doing that or not, mm -hmm. um, but I would say there's kind of like a subtlety to it and like a quietness, um, which kind of talks to, oh, I seen this when I love that one. Love that, yeah. It yeah, kind of speaks to kind of like the humanness, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm really an advocate and I champion for humanness, even though I bring up black all the time, but I, I'm really a champion for, um, getting to a point like like this is great yeah because it kind of like um explores or announces or pronounces or even enunciates or articulates um just difference and like just like um without overstating that it's like a acceptance or observation of radical difference but it is just kind of like plainly everyone is different and this is how I've captured these humans in the spaces that they're occupying. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank, thank you for that. I'm just doing a quick slideshow, just like, so this is like sneak peek stuff. This is, uh, <laughs> because this is all type of stuff I'm debating whether it goes in the book or not, but mm -hmm. most of these 
obviously you could tell by the folder name these are my favorites mm -hmm. um, it's so refreshing um to see street photography because when you're working in the fine art world you are always feeling the constant push to i wouldn't say narrow something down but to an extent where you have to be communicating this thing, this big thing, this big idea. And with street photography, you don't have that pressure. You can just literally go out here with your camera, have these amazing exchanges and, and just humanize these people, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, these everyday people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, this is this is pretty much um I have three different cameras as well. So um oh. love that. Love that. Um yeah, but that's pretty that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all the oh yeah, let's go back to um my guy here. This is a closer shot, kind of going back to what you guys were saying, um, engaging with the subject and stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. there's only one way I would be able to get this close to this man, you know. I mean, yeah, that man would not have let, let you go. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Like, he would not let me be like all up in his face. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so true. Right. So like, yeah, I definitely have to engage with these people. And like, every you can see most of these people are looking obviously directly at me. This one, obviously, he's not <laughs> <laughs> there, but... Uh, yeah like even just kind of yeah. Oakland is also interesting in that way because Oakland itself is so diverse yes like Oakland is what people think LA is and LA mm -hmm. is just not that oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was from a, a concert I went to recently this was uh wiki and navy blue so this is wiki here mm -hmm. uh navy blue here um he does modeling for like Supreme and stuff like that. He skates for Supreme as well, but he also makes music as well, which kind of got me into my arts at first was producing music and DJing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But picked up a camera instead. Rec well, recently, I'm going back to my producing stuff for sure. Yeah. Um, Have you got, this is like off topic, but not really off topic. Have you guys heard of that, uh, that dude Vic Blends on TikTok? uh no okay later on when you guys have a chance type in vic vic blends and basically he's a barber right oh and i've seen one of his videos yes you so you I'm, know what i'm getting ready to say i almost cried girl yes and he does that for a living now right so not to get too deep but i'm gonna get deep because that's just me but um also, he thank said, you for sharing. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, go ahead. <laughs> thank you for sharing, Trey. Yeah, this all ties into Trey, this whole little spiel. <laughs> but basically, the guy is, is a barber, right? And he said in 2020, when the pandemic hit, uh, he felt like all of these traits and talents that he had, like his job, like that, that he saw how easily that could be taken away. So the pandemic made him think about like, if you didn't have barbering, like, what else could you do? Like, what is your gift? So he kind of blended the two. He goes out in public and, like, approaches random people, kind of how you do with your photography, right? And yeah. sort of creates that positive exchange and is very transparent and says, hey, can I give you a free haircut today? But it's not like you just sit down and get a haircut. Like, he's asking you real life questions and like allowing the, the subject to sort of dig deep. And then you have that, that awesome exchange you know, with your subject. And I feel like in a way you're kind of doing that a little bit with your street style photography. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's just a beautiful thing to see. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I think the stories definitely help amplify too. Like, mm -hmm. um, because you have a story for each, you know, mm -hmm. it's not just like, oh, I took the photo and now I go about my day, but it's like you took the photo or maybe you had an exchange before you took the photo, but mm -hmm. either way, uh, the photo pretty much just acts as proof or as you make it, you made a photograph and then now you get to um, engage, you know, after you make that photograph. Mm -hmm. I, uh, Roger Ballin came to 
we have this thing called Visiting Art or Artist Lecture Series and Roger Ballen came and I like that he was saying making a photo instead mm -hmm. of making a photo. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, those subtleties in language, um, which made me start thinking about like composition more as I began to like advance. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that was like a good takeaway um, because he also built relationships, you know, with the people that he was taking a photograph with. So I asked, you know, would you be able to take these photographs uh, if you didn't have a relationship? And that's when he mentioned um, making the photograph like basically it's two different language. Whether you have a relationship or you don't, making the photograph is completely different outside of the realm of like building that relationship. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, no matter how good the relationship is, if you're unable to make a good photo, then you know what I mean? Right. So it's, it's good to be able to make a photograph and build those relationships. Because now that's, there's two things happening at one time. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, um, yeah, I agree with that. Um, I've had plenty of times where, you know, I'm trying to engage with someone and they're just like, no, like completely like yeah. get out of here. And I'm just like, <laughs> all right, well, you have a great day and it's nice to meet you regardless. And um, yeah, they usually are still like very cool about it. They're just like, oh, I appreciate it. Like even you asking me for to take a photo is just like, mm -hmm. you know, it can make someone's day. And um, yeah, it's, it's just a fun, fun experience. Like, I, I, I love it. I love just getting ready for the day, grab my camera, and I just step out and whatever yeah. happens, happens. We're going to all have to link when you come down to L.A. and when Sunny comes down to L.A. <laughs> I'm down, I'm down. I'm so great. I'm going to start recording, but I just want to thank both of you for, like, making time and taking time to, like, do this. Because I was a little very high key nervous uh, mm -hmm. about like putting this together, but I just want it to be something that's consistent. We can talk through our ideas and like what we're doing. Um, and I also think it's like encouraging, you know, to be able to like um, amplify what we're already doing outside of like, let's just say like social media. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like being able to talk about it. I think one thing that I was feeling hindered by was like not being able to have like conversations consistently. Absolutely. You know, I'm not just here for like, oh my gosh, I love it. It's like, mm, okay. You know, yeah. like, what am I supposed to do with that? So I, you know, like I want to be able to expound and I've noticed other people also wanted to expound too, mm -hmm. um, which is why we're here. Cause we all want to like explain our ideas, um, talk about them, process through them, and like show progress, you know. Also, it like serves as a, you know, point of departure, you know, like we'll be able to reflect and look here. Maybe we want to look back and be like, oh, well, what was I doing here that I'm not doing now? And, you know, just all types of things. So like, I really want to thank both of you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.